Hello NASCAR fans, Chris Jarrell here with rotopearls.com to bring you my breakdown and preview for the Dixie Vodka 400 from Homestead Miami Speedway. It's a busy weekend in NASCAR. Right now we've got the Xfinity race going on. Uh, it's followed by a truck race tonight. we got the second Xfinity race Sunday morning, and then we've got the NASCAR Cup race coming up at 3.30 p.m. Eastern on Sunday. We're going to be having a live show as well Sunday morning, so make sure to get into chat and check that out. Uh, check out the link. If you're not a Rotopros member, to make sure to get over to rotopros.com, you can see we've got our articles up for this week. The NASCAR article will be up later today or tomorrow for the race, early tomorrow morning. Um, you can click the sign up tab, top right hand corner, come in and see what our subscription. We've got weekly, monthly, and yearly subscriptions with free trials for each. And if you use promo code Chris from this video, you will get 50% off your first payment after the free trial is out. With that, let's jump right into this week's race. So what we're going to look at, we're going to go off of my sheet here. We're going to look at a few things. I've got both cheat sheets loaded. Um, we're going to look at the main cheat sheet. We're going to look at some track history. Uh, we're going to look at some track type history, some current form, and then kind of go over a few drivers that really stand out in those areas. So first of all, uh, we're going to look at track history. As you can tell, there are some guys that have been dominant here. Uh, for reference, for anyone that is maybe new, Homestead Miami was the... I guess the annual place where the last race of the season, the championship race, was held this year. That has changed with Phoenix, uh, the championship race being moved to Phoenix. So Homestead was moved to a little bit earlier in the year. So things are a little bit different this time around. But we still have a group of drivers. Obviously, those are championship-level drivers who have been dominant here. Starts with Kevin Harvick. Top fives in six straight races here. Uh, he won the championship as you can see here, uh, then we look at the laps led. He is second to only Kyle Busch in laps led over the last five races here. And then we've got Martin Trex Jr. He's got top two finishes in each of the last three races here. Hasn't really gotten the dominator points um, in terms, so I'm looking at Harvick a little bit over Truex just in terms of the guys in track history. There's not much price difference there. Uh, you maybe can lean Truex a little on FanDuel if you really need that savings. He's $1,200 cheaper there. So you might want to go that route. And then moving down, a couple, two other guys that really stand out are Joey Logano. He's got a sixth or better in five straight races, including a win when he got his championship in 2018. Kyle Busch has been awesome here as well. He's got, He won last year, won the championship. 2015, he won the championship. And he's got top six finishes in five straight as well. So those guys are going to be, just based off of track history, those are going to be my core guys, Busch, Logano, Truex, and Harvick. Uh, Truex would probably fall to fourth on that list. I like Harvick just a little bit more in that top uh, 11K price range. I think Elliott's probably going to be the lowest owned of those three. You could probably pivot off him in terms of GP, G, G, GPP pivot. Sorry about that. Uh, Denny Hamlin, I think, makes a GPP pivot off of, uh, you know, Kyle Busch and Joey Logano right in the middle. He, If I was doing 20 lineups, I'd maybe only have two lineups as of right now with Denny Hamlin. And then we'll jump down into that next tier of drivers. Uh, makes it interesting. DraftKings released their pricing this week after the qualifying draw so we did have that baked in there a little bit so what was interesting to see um when we seen christopher bell he qualified back in where are we here i'm just going to scroll over and find that he qualified back in 36 position so it was very interesting to see where that pricing was going to fall i kind of thought it was going to be over 10k uh, while it seems very expensive at 9300 hear me out here we're going to look at a few things in terms of the fantasy matrix as well seems a little high for a rookie driver but again this is with that place differential in mind him starting 36th so first of all we're going to go and look at some of his uh recent form since coming back here so he was 24th at darlington 11th at that second darlington race and then they followed it up with a 9th and 21st at charlotte a 9th at bristol but then again looking at the mile and a half track he was 18th at atlanta so i'm thinking he's uh, he's probably got upside somewhere in that 12th place um area that's kind of what i'm looking at and somewhere in that 12th to 20th so if we go look at the fantasy matrix for christopher bell at 12th to 20th we are looking at a range of points from 56 
to 40, like 40 to 56. If you even want to stretch that and say his floor is maybe not even as high as a 20th, you want to go back to 25 point or 25th place, that's 30 points, and he does have 12th place upside. Let's say even 15th, you want to give him that. 30 to 50 point range is excellent for him at 9,300. I think he's going to get a lot of ownership because of that. Uh, I don't think a lot of people are going to be scared off. If he was starting inside the top 30, I'd probably fade or more of a GPP play, but being that he's starting 36th uh, with that range of points that I just outlined there, he's going to be a core play for me. Um, again, just based off of, uh, especially on FanDuel. I mean, at 6,600, that makes a lot of sense. But even DraftKings at 9,300, I'm on board with Christopher Bell. Not a problem at all. So moving down a little bit, it's going to be another place differential kind of play. We're looking at Matt Kenseth. He's starting 20th. So I don't mind that, um, being that he's starting 20th, because you look how good he has been here at this track. He's got top 10s in six straight and eight of his last nine races at this track. Hasn't got a win, but he's got some top fives in there. He's starting 20th. Even if you put him in a different car, he's in the 42, which it has been fast. Uh, we'll go look at his current form here this season uh, since coming back from racing, which is his season, seven races. He's only got that one top 10, three top 20s, uh, average finish of 20.2, 20.6. Sorry about that. And we're going to go look at just how he has performed here. I just like the upside, even if we don't think he's going to get there in terms of his total upside. I think he makes sense from even a cash play. 15th place finish for him we'll go look at. So Darlington, um, he outperformed in that first race. He was 10th place. 30th in the second one kind of came back down to earth. Charlotte, 26th and 23rd. Um, the other race I'm looking at is Atlanta. He was 15th. So I think we can kind of look at him. I don't think he's going to necessarily hit that upside that we've seen from him at Homestead. But I think uh, he can finish anywhere from 10th to 20th. I think that's kind of what we're looking at from him here. He's starting 20th. Um, so that alone, if he finishes where he starts, is 24. That's not going to quite be enough. Um, we're probably looking for that 15th. 34 points uh, to his upside of 10th, which is 44. That's kind of his high-end upside, 34 to 44 points. This is without fast laps, mind you, or any laps led, so keep that in mind. But if his downside is going to be 20th place where he starts and that's 24 points, I'm willing to take that risk, being that he does have that up big upside around that 40. Even I could see even getting up to 45-plus points there for him on DraftKings this week. So stands out for me and with that being said there are guys that kind of in between that price between bell uh kurt bush is one that stands out as a possible gpp play he's been kind of up and down here at this track but what stands out for me the most with kurt bush is since returning from racing he has six top tens in seven races two top fives in there 7.6 average finish which is second best only to kevin harvick he's been super consistent um, on both DraftKings and fanduel at 8600 he's starting at 10th position so even if he finishes where he starts we're looking at 34 points so he's a little bit more of a gpp play because he's at 34 point floor i think that's kind of where we're at at that price i think we're looking for a little bit more i think he does top five upside up in that 44 uh point range uh, as you can see his 44 points he needs a fifth versus kansas 44 points he only needs a tenth i think that's pretty close in terms of that so um, you can kind of go back and forth on that kurt bush has been more consistent obviously so if he's going to be lower owned i love that pivot for gpp and then looking at some guys kind of down in that value range um, that I'll be looking at to make nine laps. Austin Dillon, we're going to have to keep. He's got Almondinger there as a backup in case the baby comes again, so we'll keep that in mind. He had a little bit of a heat exhaustion, possibly got some fumes in the car, had to call it an early day. last. Uh, that was on Wednesday night's race. So I'm kind of just waiting to see on him for now. Like his brother Ty Dillon, who is 26th in my model, he looking at consistency here at this track 24th 22nd 26th 33rd 23rd so no top 20 finishes um since the return to race and he's averaging about 25.9 26 he's starting 32nd so if we just kind of go look at that again from the matrix and we look at uh say 20th is kind of his upside so he's got upside of around 36 points I think he's at least like a 25th place car. I like this range of 26 to 36 points for him. I think that's solid for that price. Going down a little bit more, Eric Jones is one that's going to stand out for me here. Um, he's got six top fives and 11 top tens on this track type history. 
since the start of last year, which has been very, very good in terms of FanDuel. Uh, the place differential hasn't quite been there, so he's been a little on the low side in terms of DraftKings, but still, anyone in the sub-8K range, he's averaging more fantasy points than anyone. And then since the return from racing, he's got two top fives, three top tens, um, average finish of 15 for him, and he's starting 15. So that's kind of where I'm setting his floor at for this race, and that's 29 points. And again, we've seen him get top fives. I think his upside is a top five, um, right around 50. So he's going to be a little bit more. For cash, I like Dylan a little bit more. I got that place differential upside in there. But for GPP, I like the pivot to Eric Jones. Two guys that stand out for both formats going down a little bit more. I do like Cole Custer and Ryan Priest starting 35th and 33rd. And looking at what they've done so far this year, um, since the return of racing on the mile and a half tracks, Darlington 20th and 39th, that was an engine issue. Um, that was early on in the race. And then he went to Charlotte 22nd, 24th, Atlanta 26th. So he's like 20, 20th to 25th for Ryan Priest. That's kind of what I'm looking at here. So a 20th is awesome. That's 37 points. I think we can totally live with that. Um, 25th, you're looking at 27. I think we can go down even to 26th place. So if he's at 26th place, I think we can deal 25 points at his price tag, 5,700. But I'd love it because his upside is a top 20, right around that 20th place, which is going to get him close to 40 points, depending on fast laps, laps led. And then Cole Custer's the other one. Um, rookie. Oh, back to Priest here for a second. He does have some track history here. He has two races. Uh, Back in 2015, he was 38th, but then 25th last year. So I think he's kind of in that 20th to 25th place. I think that's where he can finish. Custer is a rookie here, uh, 6,000. He is starting back, I think it was 35th. We'll go to the matrix here a little bit easier, 35th. I see him kind of, you know, looking at his races since the return race. I love the car that he's in. He's in that 41. Um, he finished 22nd and 31st at Darlington. He rebounded big time with the 12th and 18th at Charlotte and then a 19th at Atlanta. So he's got three straight top 20 finishes on mile and a half tracks. Atlanta was a very tough track as well. So that was really good to see after a 22nd and 31st at Darlington, which is also a tough track. So I've got his upside somewhere around probably 15th, I think, which is 50 points, which is excellent. More realistically, probably around 20, 39 awesome um and kind of on the low side 25 which is 29 he is my favorite value play of this slate tomorrow um at that price with you know looking at a 25th place finish which i think is kind of on his low side 29 points i think that's awesome and then to cap off these value picks i really like michael mcdowell again 25th in my model he's starting 30th he has some track history here as well um, we'll go and look at that here on the other sheet. So he's got 26th, 28th, 24th, 10th. Those are his last four. So top 30s in four straight, including a top 10. Um, so I don't think he's going to be anywhere. A lot's got to go right for him to finish 10th. Um, I'd say his upside is more around 15th, probably the high end. Um, but he's more like 20th, which is 34 points. More realistically, I think you're between uh, 25th and 20th place finish. So you're looking at about 24 to 34 points with Michael McDowell, and I think that is completely fine in the low 5K range. Uh, pairing him with, say, Ryan Priest or Cole Custer, in a lot of my lineups, I'm probably going to have two of those three value plays and then even stretch it a little bit higher up into Jones and Dylan. Those are going to be the guys that I mix in with my uh, mixes of my cores in the top, including Harvick, Truex, Logano, Kyle Busch, um, and then down into uh, Christopher Bell range here as well. So five drivers up top, five down below. I think we can do a lot of Stars and Scrubs lineups. I think that's going to be the preferred lineup construction this week. Um, and then I kind of think that if you want to be a little bit more contrarian, there are, even though we do have a small field of drivers um, in NASCAR, there are some awesome pivots that we can make in terms of those guys that I just mentioned are probably going to be the most chalky. can probably make some pivots off of those guys um, in both of those ranges and even a more balanced lineup, concentrating a little bit more on the mid-tier. Maybe only one top guy like Harvick, and then you go a little bit more mid-tier, and then some value guys mix it in there. That's one way to be contrarian for sure. And then obviously leaving some money on the table in NASCAR, the smaller the field um, in any slate, no matter the sport, if you leave money on the table, you're – you don't. I don't. Don't mean. Don't be crazy. NASCAR is a sport. You can definitely go that route and be a little bit crazy in terms of leaving a thousand to two thousand on the table, provided you like your lineup. That's more of a strategy we look at in Daytona, Talladega, when place differential is really the king there. But in these tracks, you can definitely look at that. But you're gonna need one to two dominators today. 
top or Sunday top dominators right now are going to be Harvick and Logano at this point. Thanks for checking out the video. Again, if you've got questions leading up to lineup lock, hit me up in the Roto Pros chat. Hit up Dane as well. Uh, we we cover the NASCAR together. He does the articles, we do the videos. We do the live video on Sunday. Uh, also, talk to Kenny if you're doing multi-entry, like getting up into that 20, 50, um, 150 lineups. You want to build some cores. He'll give you a great advice on that. Um, I've mentioned it in all my other videos. He's, he's a whiz when it comes to putting together all those lineups, uh, doing multi-entry, building his cores, um, and spreading out the exposure so that you're not tied to one driver or another, or one golfer or another, whatever sport you're playing. You're not tied to um, one player um, that can kill you if he's kind of out of the lineup. So definitely hit us up in the Roto Pros chat. And again, tune in for the uh, live show tomorrow morning. Dane's going to join me again. Uh, we'll go over some final plays, answer some questions, and get ready for the big race tomorrow afternoon. Thanks for joining me. Please like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Leave your comments below as well. You can hit us up on Twitter at Rotopros or myself at Jaeger underscore bombs nine. Thanks a lot, everyone. Let's go get some green screens. Good luck out there.